Hi, welcome to the Photo Flunky Show, episode 114. Today's show a little bit different. We have confessions of a first-time flasher. Hi, my name is William Beam. Hi, my name is Lee Beam. And just in case you were curious. I'm the flasher. Hell's frozen over. Lee used flash recently on a photo shoot. Oh, my goodness. Brace yourselves. <laughs> yeah, I, I want to talk about this. I mean, we actually had a different topic in mind for this show, but I thought, no, this is too good. I, I, I'm not going to pass this one up. Lee's, Lee used flash, and we're going to talk all about it. But before I get to that, I want to let you know that show notes are going to be available at williambeam.com slash episode 114. And of course, you can find links to subscribe there or at photoflunky.com. And also, we've got a discount for you as for Skylum software. So if you're interested in Luminar or Aurora HDR, just use the coupon code BEAM. You can get there. Just go to williambeam.com slash Skylum, and that'll save you $10. So it's $69 for Luminar right now. And you use my coupon code BEAM, it'll drop it down to $59. I really do enjoy this software. It has, it's got this little filter in it, you know, it's, I hate to use the phrase artificial intelligence, but that's kind of what they're calling it. It's like a little AI filter. Hmm. And just basically you slide this thing from the left to the right and it makes everything look better. Oh, so it's like, does it really look better? I don't know if it's AI or machine learning. Machine learning is like a step to AI. And years ago, I used to know all this stuff when I was really into my computer science. Now I just kind of smooth the slider. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. So what's artificial intelligence? It's like it's pretending to be smart, but it's not for real. Well, did you see the Terminator? Yeah, but, you know, because I don't remember anything of the movie, it makes me think I probably fell asleep. Basically, one day the machines will wake up, realize that they're self-aware, and decide that the people who are in their way are the people. And that, that's artificial intelligence. Okay, cool. Yeah, I probably fell asleep. Yeah, we're not going to be going for that. Today, we're talking about using Flash for the first time. So, Lee, I'm really putting you on the spot today. <laughs> you were doing, well, why not, actually, why don't you tell folks what you need to do? What was the setup? I don't want to say right now, why did you use Flash? But you're using it for the first time and you've really, really avoided using it in the past. I have. Okay, so which question do you want me to answer first? Why did I... What, well, what let's, did I let's, talk about, let's talk about why you've avoided using Flash in the past. Okay. It's not that I haven't looked at it. In fact, I bought a Flash for my, my Nikon um, and it, it got broken. I'd say I that's liked, a good reason in itself. Yeah, oh, look, I, it's not that I wouldn't use it. I actually liked having it. I was fairly early, like the first couple of years into photography. And I guess I was still finding out what my genre was. And because I was taking photos, I, I lived in a horribly cold country. We pretty much were confined to indoors most of the time because I don't like the cold. So I needed some kind of light for indoors because I didn't have the outdoor light. And even outside, it wasn't that light. So it wasn't just a matter yeah. it was cold. I mean, this is... We're talking UK. You're, you're yeah. overcast and you're not getting much window well, light. Well, Scotland specifically. I yeah. mean, we just, the area where we lived, I mean, the whole of Scotland isn't necessarily always like that, but we just lived in this little built where it was pretty much, there, there was a lot of gray. Anyways, um, I I started taking photos thinking, well, I, I wanted to have some nice photos of, of Tove when she was growing up. I always wanted to make sure that I had a document, you know, stuff to pass on to her and things to look back on. Mm -hmm. So I was figuring I was going to, get into some kind of family portrait photography, um, just in a kind of casual sense. And it's turned out that that is not at all what I'm interested in. And I guess my need for flash, I found excuses why not to use it. I found it very complicated. I bought books on it. I started reading about it. And every time I thought I just needed one thing and started reading, I kept getting told that I needed more of this and I needed to get this book and I needed to understand that. And I looked at it and thought, well, if I need a degree to take a photo, then it wasn't fun for you anymore. It, it's not going to be fun. Uh, that, that's it, it, and also with space and money and uh, yeah, it, you can kind of see where this was going. All right, so we'll move forward a little bit. You're here. I've got all this equipment, and you have photos that you want to take. You know, product photos, Instagram photos, food photos, all those sorts of things. But yet, you never really wanted to use the flash, even though we had everything. I'm pretty much because, and I'm still a little bit intimidated by it because there's so many things that I don't know. For me, you know, a lot of my stuff happens on the spot. I need to get a photo done. I need to do it now. And so there's some things I know about in advance and I can prepare. But most of my stuff is really, you know, it's happening now. I've got today to do it. And today also brings its other 
tasks and responsibilities. I'm trying to squeeze something into a 30 minute session and that's going to include post-processing. For me, it's, it's also it's pressure and time consuming. So if you didn't know what to do, it takes you more time to try and sit there and figure it out. Yeah, you don't want to figure it out on a job, ideally. And sometimes that's the best way to learn. But man, it, it puts the pressure on. It goes at <sighs> oh, anxiety it, 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 levels were through the roof yesterday because I was under a lot of pressure. I had, a, I had three different projects that I had no idea that everything was going to kind of show up at the same time. And there's a lot of time pressure to deliver on these. So typically what you would do is you would take your, it's like a small set. Yep. You know, you'd take some whiteboard or black foam core or something like that. You take it outside mm -hmm. and you've also got different cloth material. You would build something up outside so you could take it in sunlight. Yeah. And in order to do that, we've got three dogs in our backyard. So we have to make sure that those are out of the way because they will come and just knock everything over. Not be able to eat them. Yeah. So we, we've got to take the dogs and put them in their crates. The other thing that you have to worry about is, well, there's a couple things. One, you've got to worry about is there available sunlight? In Florida, most of the time, it's available. There's at, daylight. The day. I don't need, you know, actually, I don't want direct sunlight almost no. 100% of the time. I don't want that. I don't want harsh shadows. But I've got a little spot where the only time, I, I generally don't have time in the morning because of what's happening at work. But afternoons work pretty well for me. So I've kind of got a time of day where I've got a couple of hours where I can slot it in somewhere there. And yep. the other issue is if a breeze comes along. Oh, yeah. Generally, we don't have issues with that. But this time of the year, we seem to have a lot of it. And with this breeze, you know, the breeze doesn't just blow foam boards over. It also blows dust and leaves and sand and all that stuff. general stuff into the set. And all that stuff shows, especially when you're using a white background for a clean, like for product photography, it's, it's dreadful. Okay. So a lot of people are probably wondering, why aren't you inside using window light? Because uh, I'm lazy and intimidated by flash. No, not, not flash. Window light. Oh, window light. Well, because we got too many oak trees. Basically, we don't really have good light inside the house. Really even, even if you go right up against the window. Yeah. With the oak trees and, and just the way the house is built, we don't get good, beautiful light coming in through the windows. Yeah. You've been doing this more than a year, at least, going outside. You decided finally, okay, I'm going to try a flash. What made you decide to try it? You. <laughs> was, it, was it me pestering you? Um, no, not, well, I, I guess kind of, but it, not really be, that you were pestering me. You've offered many times to show me and you keep telling me that it's going to be easier. And it's not that I'm arguing that it's not going to be easier, but in my mind, it was like, I, I've got 30 minutes. I don't have time for it right now. I don't now. even, I've had to carve it out of my day where it doesn't exist. I don't have time to mess up. So it was easier for me to deal with something that, I knew, even with its frustrations, you know, I know that stuff goes wrong outside, but you get comfortable with the challenges that you're used to dealing with. Okay, so you weren't necessarily apprehensive about using Flash. You were apprehensive about the learning curve and the time it takes to set up. It, yeah, really, it was that, because is this going to cost me my ability to deliver? Because this has happened, not with Flash, but it has happened before where I just couldn't deliver to the standard that I wanted to deliver. Okay. And it's, um, I, I am a little bit picky about what I want to put out. I always have an idea in my head. Okay. Was there anything else you were worried about besides the time or the setup or anything else? Really, it was that. It, and also my ability to understand it because I think because I've kind of walked away from Flash, I've disregarded anything as soon as I see somebody or hear somebody talking about light and how it works, I dismiss it because I've got this strange, I definitely am lacking a little bit on the technical side of photography and it's the way my mind works because for me, the beauty of it and the, the enjoyment comes out of the creative side. And for me, I don't think about the creative side. It's something that I just feel. It's like, it feels right. And I move things around or move myself around until things feel right. And with flash, I guess you can do that to an extent, but there's a lot of, there is, you cannot ignore the basic principles. And I think that intimidates me. I think that you can be very creative with flash. We've seen a lot of photographs from other people that are, that are use flash creatively. What happens though, is you need to understand the technical side first. Yeah. And then once you've got that, then you start thinking, okay, if I change this, then that happens. And you didn't really understand what that, if this, then that relationship was going to be yet. No, I didn't. And I mean, at one stage you said to me, okay, so if it's too bright or too dark, you can adjust the power of the flash. And then you started talking about that. Like, this is a third of a stop and a third of, and I looked in, as soon as you said that my brain just shut down, thought, okay, whatever, it will work as it is. Okay. Once we got the flash set up, mm -hmm. how was it? It was great. At one, there, there was a time when I changed from my dark 
boards and my cloth that kind of absorb a lot of the light and I had the white background for the final one which is the product stuff I did change the shutter speed I had to increase the shutter speed because it was a little bit brighter than what I, I wanted it to be but aside from that everything was very consistent I mean I went through three or four different sets maybe there were even more was it the shutter that. speed or the aperture that you changed I changed the shutter speed um, which usually is something I don't do but I I don't usually do that. I, I, if I, I don't, I normally move in a uh, manual, and yeah, I guess I changed, I changed the shutter speed because my aperture. I usually know what aperture I want for a reason. I understand the aperture. The shutter speed stuff. The numbers don't make sense to me because I don't think in terms of shutter speed. I just kind of know how low I can go without hitting a limit for wobble. Yeah, with flash in the environment that we set up, the shutter speed really shouldn't have made any difference to you at all. Yeah, I just didn't want to mess up my aperture because I was. Okay. I, I knew what I wanted there. And that's the case where you know that you want a specific aperture. Mm -hmm. That's a case where you lower or raise the power of the flash. Yeah. And I knew that I was supposed to do that, but also knew if I called you that you would explain stuff that I wouldn't understand quickly. So <laughs> I do that. Well, no, I mean, it's not that you're doing anything wrong, but my mind gets, you know, I, I was trying you're to You're concentrating think, okay, on, on what got, you're trying to do. Yeah. I've, I've got this amount of time to work in I thought it's going to be quicker for me to just do what I know and I'm kind of okay with if some of it screwed up a little bit um to get it done rather than learn something and not get it done when I have to deliver well let me explain what we did so basically we took our dining room table we kind of pushed it up against the, the window that doesn't get much light you put your background on that and then you had whatever your bottom piece was the base, yeah and, and some of it was cloth and, and some of it was foam core board and we sat next to that. I got a C stand and I put on that my Flashpoint Evolve 200, which is the same thing as the Godox 8200, if you're familiar with those. It's actually a quite powerful little flash unit, more so than the standard little Nikon or Canon flash. And we set that to one quarter power, which, you know, is a good blast of light. And I think we set your shutter speed to about 125 and your aperture to F8. Yeah, we started on F8. I think it did actually change it. We did. And, and that's where I was, I, I made the mistake. I was starting to explain to you, you could change your aperture or you could change the power of the flash. And we did a couple of test shots there and you said, okay, this looks good. We'll stick with that. Yeah. And then once that was set, I mean, your camera was on manual, the flash was on manual. Yeah. And we got lucky when we started off, it was really almost perfect. All we had to do was make one change. Yes. And we, and we went through like... Here's what happens if you change the aperture. Here's what happens if you change the power of the flash. I think you changed the power of the flash once for me yes. so that I could keep my settings. Now, I don't really care about the shutter speed. As long as it's high enough, I don't care how high or low it goes as long as I can have, because in this case, I was hand-holding. Yeah, but here's so, here's the beauty of the flash. It's, I'm, as long as uh, this flash will do high-speed sync, but we won't even get into that right now. So long as your shutter speed doesn't exceed the flash sync speed, which is like 200th or 250th of a second, depending upon your camera. You don't have to worry about how long it's open because the flash duration is sh shorter than your shutter speed. In other words, when you took a picture without the flash, it was just dark. Yeah. Yeah, you couldn't see a thing. So the only light you're getting is coming from the flash. So the shutter speed almost didn't matter at all. It was the duration of the flash that was making things sharp for you. Well, it might have mattered to me because you just said like it shouldn't exceed like the, what is it, 250th of a second. Yes. I didn't look at the numbers. I just keep winding up until I get to, <laughs> to the right You flash. know what? If, if you weren't using flash, that would make sense. In this case, it did not do you any good at all. But that's okay. You had your first experience with flash and I'm incredibly pleased and proud of you. Oh, thank because, you. Well, you, but you took some time. to You took the first step. Yeah. And then once you realize that once it's all set up, and you just start taking, then it's a matter of like, all right, where is the light? Is it, you know, you got the power where you want it. Then is, is the light what you want? And yeah. you, what did you think of the quality of light compared to sunlight? It was really good. I mean, and depending on the time of day, there are times when I can shoot and, you know, it's like maybe a little bit overcast. I don't have any shadows to deal with. I've got lovely, almost filtered through the clouds lights outside and i get some beautiful light there are other days where it's not like the temperature of the light isn't quite what it wants mm -hmm. so this this was actually great for um i had some metallic surfaces in my within my groups of subjects and those are always the tricky ones and usually i have to position those very carefully this one it didn't seem to matter too much there was one that i had to budge slightly and, and twist a little bit but it gave me a lot more versatility with putting things where i wanted versus shifting the whole set 
to see the light. I think the difference here is that I could move the light if I wanted to. Now, don't I? I did not do well, anything so brazenly bold. Well, you didn't but, have the time. But the the uh, one of the advantages that I could see was that in this case I could move the light. Whereas when I'm outside, if the light is in the wrong direction, I literally have to disassemble the whole set, shift my little setup. And then reassemble it to see if the light is correct there. Yeah. So that is something where it, it can become a problem. I think the my only saving grace there is that I seem to shoot outside in the same place roughly at the same time of day. So the direction of the light is pretty consistent, even if the, the type of light is All different. Right, so if you shoot at the same time outside, if you want your shadows or something different, you literally have to move your entire set. I have to move the set. Whereas this way, we can just move the light around on the stand. Yeah. The way I set this up for you is I put the light through a 24-inch softbox. For, if you're curious, I'll put a link into the show notes. But it was uh, Last to Light Joe McNally Easy Box, so 24 by 24. I put that about 45 degrees to your left, mm -hmm. and it was angled slightly down kind of on your set. Mm -hmm. Did that, I mean, there were like very soft shadows on the right-hand side. I I like to have, most of the time, I like to have a little bit of shadow. I did have some shadow with some of the white background product photography, which it didn't bug me. But if I'd had the choice, I would have preferred some light coming in from the other side or maybe to move the light because with the white background, I really wanted almost a clinical look for, there yeah. were just only two shots like that and they were for a different purpose. It didn't matter. Nobody's criticizing them. This is just my personal thing. Otherwise, I would have said something. But for the most part, I do like to have some soft shadows because it gives a three-dimensional feel to it and that's what I want. For me, everything's about being real and having integrity. And not all of these were product shots in the sense that they were, you know, in the typical sense. No, not not all of them, but it was kind of like that kind of setup. Yeah. And we didn't move the light around. You just went in there, took your shots because, as you said, you didn't have much time. You needed to get in there, get your shots. That's right. And then I didn't move. dare touch the light. When you set stuff up, I was like, OK, it's been done. <laughs> OK. So compared to going outside and moving your set around or the idea of what we set up, what what did we say? Did it take us about 10 minutes to set up the lights? Yeah. Well, it took you 10 minutes to set up the I, lights. I set it would have light. taken me about two hours and 25 minutes and lots of interruptions for you. But Well, yeah. that's because you've never done it before. <laughs> no. But once you're comfortable with it, 10 minutes to set the things up. Is that reasonable mm -hmm. for the future? Yeah, it's very reasonable for the future. I mean, uh, we take time to put the dogs in their crates. The actual setting up of the sets doesn't take that much different time the one thing is that if the wind's blowing i'm not going to wreck my my set because i had a um, completely ruined set from some stuff that's stained with the wind a week or two back yeah I, so i'm not putting the set set up into um into the time factor because you would because have that, to do that, that either way that, yeah i'm only going by things that would not have to happen outside and then packing away it was about five minutes was I guess. about five minutes with some help which hopefully i'll be able to do at the same time when i know what the stuff is and where it goes it's like william tells me oh you just need this and then he uses some name for something and i stand there and go okay and i wait to see what it looks like because i haven't got a clue all right I'm, i might have to make like a numbering system for you yeah okay but the nice part is putting that on the c stand we could have had direct overhead light we could angle it pretty much from anywhere mm -hmm. and that's that's the reason i have c stands as well as you know just the the light stands the light stands you can kind of toggle the the head of the light you know angle it up or down, but you can't really reach it over the top of the table and have it shoot down that way. So it, it gives us some versatility that we, we didn't, I think we used it somewhat because of where I positioned the light that we wouldn't have been as easily able to do with uh, a regular light stand. See, I just top down shots and they were absolutely great. Yeah. But I think like if there was like for some shadow on one side, I didn't really have a problem with that one. I think also because of the kind of background that I had then it wasn't on the whiteboard. It worked out absolutely great. I guess you would have a light coming in from the other side to make sure that we, the we could have a light on the or, other side. or something to bounce some lights on yeah, there. That's exactly right. We could either yeah. have a light there or we could put up like a whiteboard or one of my reflectors and it bounced some light back in to kind of yeah. soften some of the shadows. I thought the, from the photos you showed me, I thought the shadows were very soft, which I, they should have and been. I, and I do, you know, for aside from the white board, which I managed to kind of soften a little bit more in, in, in Lightroom afterwards. Look, they're good. I'm very happy with them. I have no problems, but I do usually want some shadows. My issue with shadows is when you've got a shadow coming, casting or casting a color cast from a shadow from something reflective, 
onto one of the other products. So sometimes I've got things laid out and I'm very specific about how I display them because I need to leave room for text. So what I do is in my mind's eye, I try and figure out what I want to say and where I want the text and how big it is and guess the space that I need, which I never seem to get 100% right, but I usually get it close enough that it's perfectly workable. All right. So now that you've been through your first experience, Mm -hmm. what would you like to change or what would you like to learn that maybe you didn't go through the first time around? I think I'd like to learn about having like very specific light, like if I wanted to highlight something in there, this, the kind of setup that I had with the products that I had yesterday, Mm -hmm. it wasn't that sort of thing, but sometimes you've got a group of things and there's one that you really want to stand out. Like maybe you've got five, let's pick a silly example. You've got five chocolates and one is like, oh, this is the best. And you sort of want the focus to be right on that. And I think it's really nice when that one is not necessarily in the center, but you've something draws the eye into the one that you want people to look at. We can actually do that because we've got the stuff. We've, what happens in a situation like that is you have a larger source, let's say like the, the Last Delight Easy Box that's lighting everything up, but you put that kind of at a lower setting. Then you get another flash and you put a snoot on it. And a snoot is nothing more I know than, what that is. You know <gasps> what that is? Yes. So you know what the snoot does? I it know just, because you told, told us in a podcast. Yes. So the snoot, for, <laughs> in case... In case you're listening and you don't know what a snoot is, it is just something that is basically like a cone that comes down to a narrow point and lets just a little bit of light out. And you aim that at the one thing that you want to highlight. So you've got your your main flash for everything is at just a little bit of a lower power. So the one that's got the snoot on it has a little bit higher power, and that's why it's brighter than the others. I think you got to be very specific where you point it. Well, that's true, but that's because you want the light to go in a specific yeah. place. Now, let's face it, you could go on Photoshop and just put a little radio or Lightroom, for that matter, and put a little radial thing on and make it something brighter. But yeah. but honestly, if you want to get it right in camera, then that's a case where you'd use two flashes and you'd have your broad light and your snoot. See, the irony is, in spite of my laziness with learning flash, I am much lazier when it comes to post-processing. You know, I, I'm working on an image and after two minutes, it's kind of TikTok, let's get done here. So... Yeah, that's why I don't do weddings and portraits. But seriously, I I don't have time. My stuff is pretty high pressure. I don't always know what's coming and when it's going to show up. But when it gets there, you you know, you get it out or somebody else has it. And it's that simple. In this case, we actually used very little equipment. So we had the flash itself, the C-stand. There was a bracket that the flash had to go on. Mm -hmm. There was the easy box, you know, the soft box that it was on. And then on top of your camera, we put the controller because this was like a radio flash, not uh, a CLS, you know, optical flash. It was radio controlled and you could control everything just from the top of your camera. My camera felt so sexy. It's never worn anything like that. Oh, before. yeah. It was, it's like a, a nice, sexy hat. Yeah, it was very cool. And that was it. It was. It really wasn't that hard to put together. I think the th- only thing that was a bit of a struggle was just putting the easy box around the little kind of lollipop thing with that bracket. And that was because I was behind it. I should have put it on before I put it, mounted it on the, on the C-stand. Oh, well, it worked fine. But if you can show me again, so I know how to oh, do it. Well, probably. of course I will. That's the question I want to ask you is like, will you flash again? I'll flash again. I, I prefer to do it in the house. I don't think I want to do, go and do it out yet because I'm not confident enough. But the more I flash, the better I'll get. And, and any last thoughts about flash? I mean, because like you said, you resisted this for a long time. And I understand, like, it was mostly about time constraints. But once you get more comfortable with it, and if it only takes you, like, 10 minutes to set up, is that reasonable? Yeah, that's fine for me. I mean, and I said to you, uh, you know, a lot of it was intimidation as well, because it just, it looks so complicated. And honestly, I have made leaps and bounds in my photography since I got away from forums and, like, these groups. I'm not saying they're... I, I found them very mean and not everybody has this experience. I know that I'm sure there are, I was probably just hanging out in the wrong ones, but yeah, I have not had a good experience with that, with, with those. I think things just get overly complicated and it's usually, if you, if I think back, it's just one or two people who kind of rule the whole group and they come in there and they tend to shout everyone down and, and sort of line you up like neat little soldiers and tell you what you should and shouldn't do. But yeah, the, the bottom line is, Every time I thought I had something, I was told that it was never going to be good enough if I didn't learn this, buy this, buy that, set things up like this. And by the time I was finished, I, I thought, well, you don't want to have to do all that. I stuff. don't want to be a professional photographer. I want to have fun as a photographer. And that really is 
my goal with photography is to have fun and to deliver stuff that I'm happy to to put out to either, either to share or for myself. And I don't think that that's a lesser goal than somebody who has a roaringly successful business going. That's I think as, everywhere. I think as you get more experience with Flash, you realize it really isn't that hard. You set it up, you get a common place to start with. You know what your aperture and exposure is going to be with your light. And then you just kind of dial in the power where you want it. There, well, are, they, there are all sorts of tricks that you can get into later, but you start getting a sense of control of the light as well as your exposure. I agree with you. And I, you know, it makes me step back and have a look at it. But it, honestly, the internet makes it look complicated. And that's why I say the problem is these forums and groups where you've got, I don't want to say unqualified people, but where you just really have no control over who's coming in and giving advice. When you get into somebody's website where they are instructing you or you get onto you know you get into something where you're getting taken step by step that is a different story and perhaps that's where I, I messed up and I should have done that but I was trying to figure out what I went and I thought hanging out with other photographers was the way to learn and sometimes it might be but for me it, it just it served to confuse me and make me feel inadequate like almost like my my goals in photography were inferior so why bother well, trust me, you're more than adequate. Thank you. <laughs> right. See, he always believes in me. He helped me with Flash. Absolutely, and I'll help you again. All right, everybody, that is all for today's show. I just wanted to, I was so happy and excited that Lee decided <laughs> to give this a try. And well, I put a survey out asking people on my email list. Basically, the question was, what would you like to know more about Flash? And I got some really great responses back. And I asked him that question. I asked him, do you own a Flash? There's really only two questions on the survey. And if you're not on the email list, you didn't see that. I'm going to put this question on the show notes. So if you want to click that link and go to the survey, that's going to be available at williambeam.com slash episode 114. And honestly, tell me what, what you want to learn more about Flash, and we will see if we can't give you some more information. Thank you so much for listening to the Photo Flunky Show. We really appreciate you. As I said, show notes are going to be available at williambeam.com slash episode 114. And also, if you're into portraits and if you're into Lightroom, I've got some free portrait brushes for you available at williambeam.com slash free brushes. They're a simple little set that'll help you enhance the iris, the whites of the eyes, skin tone, and brighten up the teeth. And you know what? I need to come up and do some blush and other things. So you should speak I, to Tove about I should, that. I should, I should talk to our daughter and I'll come up with another set of brushes for makeup. Maybe I'll do. I'll add that as a project. <laughs> makeup in Lightroom or yes. Photoshop or wherever else you're working. And of course, we would love it if you'd subscribe to the Photo Flunky Show. Just go to williambeam.com slash iTunes or williambeam.com slash Google Play Music. And then we'll see you again next week. <laughs>